blended affair on the air right now. Here's your host, Michelle Yeah. Welcome back to Swirl, your A through Z covering the LGBT, LM, NOP, and everyone in between show. I'm Michelle Meow, your host. Hey, you can like us on Facebook. It's really easy. You could just search Swirl Radio, and uh, maybe I'll be your friend if you search Michelle Meow, though I share a lot of intimate details, such as does hair grow longer on the nipple when you turn over 30? I'm turning 31 this weekend. Anyway, TMI, <laughs> TMI. All right, so our next guest. We love to feature super amazing people from our community, the LGBTQ community, that is. And our next guest has been nominated for a Trans Guy Community Award, uh, nominated for the Glad Media Award for his outstanding blog, Black Academic. He is the founder of Who We Know and has released a film titled Still Black, A Portrait of Black Trans Men. So let's welcome Courtney, Dr. Courtney Ryan yeah. Ziegler, that is, to Swirl. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. I'm so blessed to have you here. Uh, I like to say doctor because it, it like makes me feel like so who are we going to save today <laughs> <laughs> but um pretty much with your brilliance and your knowledge we're going to save the world i bet you tonight um so you're such a madman you know very successful and i'll think i start i'll start with your blog uh uh-huh. black academic and just by the name of it my guess is we're we're educating someone yeah, yeah um i actually started the blog when i was um in my first year of graduate school and i was the seminars weren't that interesting and so I felt that it, to, you know, make grad school much more interesting for me and for me to actually stay, <laughs> I needed yeah. another different outlet. And it was like, I think 2003, late 2003, early 2004, when blogging was really starting to take shape. Um, and so I jumped in on it with Black Academic, and it's been a success ever since. Well, the first um, post, when you, if you go on the blog right now, mm-hmm. the, the uh, blog title is 10 years ago my mother committed murder yeah which was you know somewhat shocking but absolutely i was interested in in finding out more so everything is raw and real on your blog were you speaking literally about your own mother yeah that's that's recent essay is literally about my own mother um i really wanted to use the site at to you know to talk about being black in the academy being queer in the academy and also um recently because i relaunched it six months ago at this point <clears throat> excuse me and i really wanted to focus on black trans politics and visibility and things like that but i felt that i couldn't really talk about that if i didn't talk about my personal experience and my life um so i also use this space to yeah to talk about me um to get it out because i feel that being vulnerable and being open and being candid about who i am i think encourages other people to share and i think well, it's yeah, so important so. absolutely so let's talk about you let's try <laughs> let's let, uh, you know some historical context maybe a coming out story uh-huh um coming out story i came out as tra- well i came out as a lesbian i think when i was uh that is so weird to say with this voice in this body right now <laughs> but uh <laughs> <laughs> i came out as a lesbian when i was like way young um I want to say like 16 years old and wow. my family totally supported me loved me you know whatever i wanted to do in life pushing me to go to school you do it do it courtney um i came out as trans i want to say almost at five years at this point mm-hmm. i was identifying um as genderqueer for a minute and that label did not work for me mm-hmm. um no offense to anybody who uses it but for me it wasn't it mm-hmm. wasn't the business and so I started to identify as trans curious because I was like, I don't know, <laughs> my mm-hmm. life is going to change. Um, trans curious. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so um, I knew that transition would be part of my life's journey. I just didn't know when. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was at that point, yeah, five years ago. I'm 32 years old now. So. Oh, wow. So mm-hmm. has the hair in your nipples grown longer? Yes, it has, actually. Oh, oh, but I, I so. think that's from hormones. <laughs> 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 so keep it real. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So you know, um, you didn't change your name then when no, I you didn't transition. It. Is there any reason why? Or just um, I didn't change my name because actually, if people didn't know, Courtney is a boy's name, um, <laughs> and I'm so grateful for my mother to have named me Courtney because it's allowed a lot of flexibility in terms of my gender performance. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because when people hear my name, they want to, they, like, I get it all the time. That's a girl's name. And I'm like, well, no, actually, um, in Jamaica, mm-hmm. for example, the name Courtney is very popular for men. So 
There you I, go. I always throw you, that fact out. You, <laughs> like, Google it. Yeah, you were born a man. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so, you know, I, I have introduced you as doctor. I'm, I'm sure people are wondering what kind of doctor, but you have a doctorate in African-American studies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, why African-American studies and not, like, trans studies or, you know, any other study for that matter? Um, African-American studies, I... It, I don't even know. I just ended up there, actually. Uh, every, All the work that I did when I was in college, I was like, I'm never going to go to grad school. I'm never going to go to school after college because I can't afford it. Um, but I ended up working in a graduate information program, which is like helping students of color, low-income students, go to graduate school. And I worked there, and I was like, maybe I should apply to graduate school. And I did. One school I applied to, I got in, um, which was San Francisco State in their ethnic studies department. And... Once I arrived there, I was like, whoa, I could, I could study, <laughs> you know, about blackness and, you know, people of color. And, like, it's real, it's legitimate, and I can get a degree. Because um, in college I had done film, and it was nothing about race or anything about me. And so I just kind of stuck with it. So what's, like, the one thing that has stuck with you since you've graduated, um, you know, about the African-American studies or culture um, um, that you think people don't know or, you know, or, or could use some more education on? that we are a very group of brilliant people. We are, we are a strong group. We are resilient. Um, I think that black intellectuals do not receive enough credit in the academy for the work that we do do. Um, I mean, there's a list of things, but that blackness is beautiful. And that sounds so cliche, but it really is. And so yeah. that's what I, I, I think I walk away from it. Well, I, you know, I, I'm so glad that you brought a brilliancy. It's beautiful. <laughs> and all this because my next question actually encompasses all of that. Um, but before I get to that question, actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go out of line here because I want to go on break and then come back to that question. Um, you know, with where we're at with pop culture, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, besides pop culture, the LGBTQ community and the current you know presidential administration kind of all this progress that we have, we still hear from the media, though, that the black voice is missing. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you agree? Mm-hmm. I agree. And I, I, I think it's so funny. I was on a, a Twitter chat earlier, and um, they were talking, and Black Melamere Reimagined was happening, um, and there was this panel, and they were talking about reality TV and blackness and blah, 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 and how, you know, like, you know, we're selling out, there's these stereotypes, and I guess I'm, all, I'm an independent media maker, so I'm always like, we can complain and complain and complain, but if we don't support the people that are, you know, the independent people who are doing it with no money and who are doing it because they have a vision, exactly, yeah. um, and because they want to change the narrative, I think that that's where all of our energy should be focused. Um, Thank you. So that we cannot, because just saying it's we're vi- invisible is just so easy. It's, right. It's, so. Right. Absolutely. We have to take a quick break, but, you know, when we come back, we'll talk about your film. Um, yeah, still black. And we'll also talk about that brilliancy that I was talking <laughs> about, because there is an essay that you wrote that's been posted to the Huffington Post mm-hmm. that I have to ask, and which includes the enchi- entire transgender universe. Okay. So you'll stick around with us? For sure. Okay, we're going oh, on a break, shit. and my nipple hairs will get longer <laughs> when we come back.